We are now recording. Welcome, everyone, to the inaugural launch of the uh, new subcommittee executive uh, team. April 2021, we're four months into uh, the new crew uh, at the subcommittee, and uh, we are excited. Uh, on behalf of Tom, uh, Ed, and myself, I want to say thank you, everybody, for being a member. And um, just to reiterate, uh, for those of you who are watching a recording here, um, we're going to keep the mics muted until the end of the meeting, and then we're going to open up a 10-minute Q&A session so that you guys can uh, ask questions or um, make some comments. So we're going to drive everything off of a... Uh, let me pull it up here. A uh, basically just a PowerPoint presentation, just talking points, uh, so we can show you guys what we have going on. So, big question: Can you guys see what I just put up? Yep, looks good. Yeah. All right. Excellent. I'm going to make this back to big again, and we're good. Okay. Already talked about this. Um, there is a chat functionality, and you guys are welcome to put uh, comments up. I don't know that if I can actually see it because I'm sharing a screen out. So Ed and, and Tom, if you see any comments in there that need to be called out, um, you're going to be responsible for bringing them to my attention. Got it. Um, Obviously, at any time, you guys are always uh, welcome and encouraged to reach out to any one of us at uh, our respective email addresses. It's super easy. President, vice president, and treasurer at subcommittee.com. Um, I try and make it uh, you know, a, a goal of mine to respond uh, absolutely within 24 hours, but typically uh, a lot sooner than that. I'm a, I'm a slave to my email, so feel free to reach out at any time. Time for whatever reason. All right, um, we're going to take a, just a couple of minutes and uh, Ed, Tom and myself will do a really quick one minute rundown of who we are and why we now find ourselves in the position that we find ourselves in. We're going to spend some time revisiting the subcommittee's uh, mission statement. Um, and just so that you know, none of this is pre-scripted. This is just simply an agenda of things that we've decided to talk about today. Um, and then we're going to move on to some things that we have talked about, and that's uh, where we're going to be focusing on for the upcoming year in 2021. Uh, we got a big list of opportunities and challenges, and we need to dial in on uh, what we're going to focus on. Otherwise, nothing's going to end up getting done. And the last 10 minutes will be uh, Q&A questions for you guys to uh, reach out. Have your voices heard. So introductions. Um, I am going to go last because they always say save the best for last. Why don't, uh, <laughs> why don't, why don't we start with Tom? I'm going to go clockwise for my screen. So Tom can start. Who, who are you? Why are you here? Um, my name is Tom Chalvin. Um, I've been in the hobby. Well, let me backtrack. I first bought my first uh, submarine. It was a Darnell type seven back in late 80s, early, uh, um, late 70s, early 80s. Um, but at that time, I had no one to connect with, got frustrated and it sat collecting dust for um, decades. And then I got back into the uh, hobby about 10 years ago and have been passionate ever since. So how did I get here? Um, our, our hobby is small and, and I, I saw it fractured. And, and so my passion is I wanna bring everything back together and get a central location that everyone can come together and learn and, and build this hobby from. So that's that's my goal. Excellent. All right, Ed, you're up. And I, I want to mention before we turn Ed over that Tom, you look much better now than you do in the picture that we have in the subcommittee report. I'm 70 pounds lighter, yes. That's awesome. All right, Ed. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Uh, it, Ed, and uh, I go by Sub Ed. That was actually a, a moniker handed to me many years ago by uh, Mr. Ray Mason, who's sitting out there in the crowd. Um, a little bit about myself. My first sub 
um, was uh, a Crick, Crick U25. Uh, many people know that sub. And uh, way back then, I can remember it was 1980 and I was 240 feet beneath the waves of the Norwegian Sea on board a fleet ballistic missile submarine discussing um, I had seen an ad in a model magazine about RC submarines, and I was discussing with the dive officer and the chief of the watch it. Wow, this, this is such a great thing, a hobby. And someday we're going to have all these models and become popular and have things like emergency blow and all that. And they were poo-pooing and laughing at me. And uh, sure enough, within 10 years of that, you know, I had this crick. I then purchased uh, an angle Patrick Henry. And uh, from that, uh, I had discovered the subcommittee at the uh, 1991 uh, fun run in Sayreville, New Jersey, where I met Skip and Mike Dory and a bunch of people. And I saw that there were like-minded people. They introduced me in the subcommittee. My first issue was number seven and uh, it was number 541 is my member number. I still know that to this day. Uh, I had written articles for the subcommittee report and I even had a column at one time. And like Tom said, I'm looking at it today and I look around, I see the world has moved on and I want to do something about it for us. Thank you. Nice, thanks Ed. Uh, and that leaves me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Bob. Um, I, I uh, have the, the moniker that was um, gifted to me by my son, the RC sub guy. Um, yes. I, I would say that, um, you know, more than anything else, like my, my mission in, in life when it comes to, to submarines really is, is education. I have a real passion for trying to pass along uh, information to people and that's that's goes all the way back and I, I'm, I'm a relative newcomer probably to a, a lot of you people I, I built my first sub starting in 1999 so I've only been doing this for 22 years now um, uh, and I started building for other people probably 13 years ago so I've, I've built lots of boats I think I think my last tally was 73 uh, functional RC submarines. Uh, and that doesn't include static display models. Um, so I've touched uh, a little bit of everything from almost every manufacturer that you can think of. Um, like Ed and Tom, um, you know, I've, I've kind of had the opportunity to take a look at the subcommittee from, from the outside in. I haven't really dipped my toes deeply in it, um, but I feel strongly that there is nothing but opportunity for this organization. Um, you know, it's, this is, uh, it, it's an amazing hobby that so many people uh, are interested in. And I think where we really fell down is, uh, is growing uh, and evolving with the times and really bringing more recognition uh, in the world to this, this absolutely amazing hobby. And so what I would love to, to see um, you know, from, from this point forward is a, a, a much more intentional strategy uh, on behalf of the subcommittee to um, do some good things for our membership uh, and for the hobby as a whole. So I, I would like to do that. And just as, as a bit of a background, um, I, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, my family and I started a company unrelated to subs, obviously. Uh, back in 1999, same time I got into subs, uh, grew it um, to about $40 million a year. We sold it to a big company um, in 2011. I worked for that big company for a long time. So I've got exposure to the corporate world. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, I said uh, I got cancer and that kind of opened my eyes to um, what I wanted to do with life. And I said, you know what? I would kill myself if I didn't try hard uh, at this sub stuff and see what I could do with it. So that is what I did. Unfortunately, my wife is very, very understanding. And she said, yeah, sure. This sounds like a great idea. And that's where we're at now. Good deal. Okay. Introductions are over. Pardon me if also uh, I'm uh, looking distracted. I'm helping other users that are trying to get online. Okay. All right. Absolutely. 
I my screens are all locked up because I'm sharing presentation. So that's that's awesome that you're taking um, point on that. All right, <clears throat> what I've got up on here is the current subcommittee mission statement. Uh, and this is visible on the existing subcommittee website under, uh, I believe it's on the homepage. And then when you click on like more, it brings you to a sort of a, a, a long explanation of who the subcommittee is. Um, I think in general, we've, we've talked about this before and, and at its heart, I think this is fairly valid or viable um, if somewhat wordy and, and not overly succinct. Um, what I, I really wanted to touch on, and this will be our discussion point, so I'm not just talking here. Can, can, we, can we pare it down to the, to the core? And this is, this is kind of what I came up with. And there's some four key points in this discussion. So globally focused, not-for-profit, collecting and disseminating information, history, and resources about submarines. Um, you know, this, this, this would be, in my mind, you know, just something that we can use in the way of a lens to analyze all of our decisions. And if they move towards this goal, then we proceed. And if they don't, then we shelve it. So uh, Ed and, and Tom, um, that you just had a really brief glimpse at this. I threw this at you out of the blue, I think yesterday. So um, initial initial thoughts on this? Well, I, I always like uh, simple, you know, I think the simpler, uh, you know, like a, almost like a, how a mathemat ma mathematician looks at a, a formula, you want to simplify everything. Um, and and this 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 does it. This definitely does it. Um, I like it. You know, um, I, I've made comments before that the subcommittee is a lot more than just the focus of the RC submarine. You know, and this kind of takes a step back from that. Um, you know, we want we as we said, I, I thought the goal or once felt that the goal was we are to be the premier organization for the submarine aficionado, whether he's a, a static model, an RC model or a researcher. And, and this tends to put that in a point. It just, it's a, it's a nice clean slate. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, now on to you. Well, okay. um, I, 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 I. So I, I like it mostly. I guess for me, what I don't see is any um, connection between the hobby as well as real, uh, the one-to-one -one scale. So maybe something about all scales of submarines would be would be good. Um, I would love to so, see. So yeah, I guess I guess to that point. Um, you know, I, I, I intentionally left it fairly generalized when it talks about information, history, and resources about the craft known as submarines. So I, I would, you know, if you looked at it in the right light, I would say that probably comes in. Like, do you think we need to stipulate scale versus full-sized? We could make a point in there something about... Um, replicas versus, uh, you know, originals. I would love to see if you reduce more to a single sentence if we could. Um, you know, subcommittee is for all things submarine related. Oh, like a, like a, like a 10 word or less kind of thing. I mean, just something really brief that, and then we can always do, you know, if you want to qualify that more, I don't know. Um, I guess my, my initial thought is it'd be something we could put on everything we, we do. You know, uh, like a, like a, like a, like a tag, like a, like a tagline for the subcommittee. And if we did shirts, if we did anything in the future, it, it could be part of that tagline. I wonder if that's almost <laughs> a separate. <laughs> uh, underwater, the only way to fly. Something like that. <laughs> is that what we're getting back to here? Mm. No, I, 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 I like that idea. I think our mission statement needs to be a little bit more specific. Yeah. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit too general. So, but I like your idea of a tagline. Tagline. Um, let, let me put let me put that down as a point of discussion um, for us to think and ponder about. 
Um, I like that idea. It's, you know, from a marketing perspective, it's, it's something that needs to be simple and easy for people to wrap their heads around. what we do. I yep. that. I and I, I just want to take two seconds and, and talk about what my thoughts about each of this were. Um, globally focused, to be honest, I think that's some, some place that we lost um, yep. a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think we kind of turned into a more North America or dare I even say America, yeah. you know, centric organization. Um, you know, I, in my job deal with people from all over the world. And I, I know firsthand, obviously the value of, uh, you know, alternative ways of doing things, um, you know, alternative products, um, different cultures, you know, thoughts and opinions. Um, I would really, really like us to use this as one of our primary lenses when we start analyzing our efforts um, to make sure that anything we do can be scaled uh, so that it can be globally, like, like global in nature. Um, not for profit, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I, I think maybe, maybe we went too far. Uh, not for profit almost turned into a... Um, won't spend any money, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we've got a very healthy nest egg in place right now. Um, and, uh, we've got lots and lots of opportunities to invest that money in. So in my mind, not for profit, it doesn't mean, um, you know, hoard our cash. It means we're going to spend our money, um, in a, in a manner that every nickel goes towards value added, um, you know, products and services for our members. Like web, web uh, like for maintenance, maybe something like that. That would be that. a great idea. You know, yeah. upgrading, larger server, I don't know. Collection and dissemination. Uh, we're going to get that information and make it available to people, make it easy for people to get uh, a hold of it. Um, and then all of the different topics, information, history, resources, and basically anything to do with, with submarine. So a takeaway from this point, um, if you guys are okay with it, you know, we'll, we'll maybe field this to the membership via the forums, perhaps look for some feedback. I kind of, I get an okay feeling from it right now, but to Tom's point, I think maybe we'll look at a, a more uh, snazzy tagline uh, for the subcommittee, that's a little bit easier for people to digest that we can um, move forward with our marketing efforts. Uh, can I make a, a little point too? Uh, yeah. We are open to suggestions out there. Okay, if you guys have ideas and, and want to submit them, please do. And we're going to make it more transparent. This is not the black hole. We want to hear from you guys. Absolutely. Is your club? We just now, now we're going to get to the, the meat and potatoes of things. Okay. So we're four months in, and basically, I would say our first four months has basically been taking stock. Right? Is that pretty fair to say? Where where are we at? What resources do we have? You know. Um, what are the opportunities and, and challenges? So our focus for 2021, which is, which is now down to eight months, um, get our house in order. Um, we, we've got some very um, monumental things that we need to do uh, in terms of internal infrastructure with the subcommittee um, that we need to put in place before we can even think about putting new stuff in place. Where are we at? Where do we need to be? I think that's, so, that's a fair point. This is kind of where we're at. And there are some things in this list that are high priority. There are some things that are in low priority. This is a very, very rough first pass look at um, roughly kind of sort of almost in order of priorities. Uh, and we're just gonna start at the top and kind of work our way back. Um, First and foremost, you know, our voice to the world is primarily uh, digital and, and through two main portals, that being the, the forums 
uh, and that being our website. Uh, and I dare say what I probably forgot to put on there was social because that's a really, you know, a big thing, a big opportunity for us, um, which is down there at point number nine, maybe shouldn't be. But just to give everybody an update and Tom and, uh, and Ed uh, an update in terms of where we're at. So the forums are um, one of, of the biggest tools that we have. This is, um, I'm going to actually stop sharing here because I don't know if you can't see me or not. I really think that, that would be terrible if you just didn't see my smiling face. There we go. So the forums are, are a huge opportunity uh, for us. And um, unfortunately, they did not... Um, receive as much love maybe as they, as they should have. They are approximately four versions out of date, right. um, which, which is a significant issue. Um, the updating of them is not as simple as like downloading the new version and then like upgrading to the new version. Um, when you jump <clears throat> uh, versions of, of forum software, uh, they're designed to be incremental. So you go from, you know, version 4.0 to 5.0 to 6.0, for example. Um, what we've done, because uh, neither Tom nor Ed nor certainly myself have the background or expertise uh, to do these upgrades ourselves, uh, we've enlisted the help of a third party. Um, gentleman by the name of Richard Morris, who happens to be based out of Canada, uh, and he is an exceptionally talented uh, individual um, who actually ended up, uh, he was actually a, a, uh, one of my employees in my previous company, um, hand wrote the entire back end of our, of our company, something in the vicinity of a quarter million pages of code, um, which is a lot. <laughs> So he has taken it upon himself to work through the forum upgrades. So the goal is to be able to transition to the newest version of the forum software without losing any information, posts, photos, and that kind of thing. Um, not an easy situation, um, but he is uh, in, the, in the process of doing that right now. Um, in the process, he's also going to simplify our subscriptions to a bunch of various web services. Um, right now, things are somewhat um, scattered. Uh, and obviously, this is what kind of ends up happening when you talk about decades of kind of incremental upgrades. They got a little bit scattered. So again, as somebody who has no idea in terms of who we were, what we're doing, he took a look at it from 10,000 feet and said, this is probably what we should do. So that's what's going on right now. Um, from a website perspective, I, I'd say our website is it's adequate right now. It's a, it's a customer facing portal that kind of gives people information about who and what we are, but there's a lot of opportunity that's being left on the table. Um, I've decided to take it upon myself to take a crack at updating the website. Um, what, this will allow us to do is implement changes, uh, upgrades, and features internally instead of having to uh, engage the services of the third party. Um, and that's not to say it has to be me. Anybody can do it. Um, it's, uh, it's just simply a web portal, uh, drag and drop, click, you know, kind of, of deal. And we can um, instantaneously upgrade uh, and change any aspect of the website that we feel within a matter of minutes. So that's kind of, of where we're at right now. Um, before we jump to the next point, Ed and, and Tom, do you have any thoughts or comments on forums and, and website? Go ahead. Go ahead, Ed. Sorry. No, Tom, please. I, I yield to you. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna we're, go back and forth. Um, Are you Canadian? <laughs> I, we, okay. I, I think it's great to, to, you know, we really have to, like you're saying, lay this foundation. We've got a clean house, then we can move on. Uh, 
because uh, as you say, the Nautilus Dry Docks and, and uh, Subcommittee are using the same software, but they're so out of date differently that, that it's like a different look and feel altogether. And um, hopefully, you know, we can bring and stay on top of that, you know, and, and keep the software up to date. So, you know, we don't have issues. Um, like the current one, you know, the, the certificate issue we had there early this week, or just trying to trying to pay cash to become a member. Yeah, you know, that's good. That's a good point. The certificate, just a, you know, it's a, a calendar thing, and we had no calendar, yeah. so and I didn't get a notification of it expiring. So that's something that I think we need to build. Not only do we have to revamp what is outward facing, but inward, we also have to build some good strategies and, and structure because if we're changing presidents and vice presidents and treasurer every so often, well, that somehow we have to have a good transition that the other people coming in won't be starting from scratch like we have been. So, And, and to that point, just so that everybody knows, we've started to take steps um, to switch from personal email accounts to using the generic president, vice president, treasurer, uh, webmaster, email accounts when we start signing up for products and services um, so that when new individuals step into those roles, they simply get the login information for that account. And now all of a sudden they've got access to all of the historical information, all of the notifications and, and all of that stuff. And we've also, uh, although we, we need to get a little better at this, we've started a transition document. So the, the kinds of things that when you come into this role, what do you need to look at? You know, what needs to be done uh, and, and where are we at? So that brings us to point number two. And this is probably one of the biggest, um, you know, opportunities I think, I think that we have. And this is gonna be incorporated into the website. So right now, um, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, Tom and Ed, maybe you know more than me. Primarily our membership roster is housed within, within PayPal, is, is that? correct for the most part? Um, yes. And then also <laughs> the uh, forum, it shows a paid member. So we would have to correlate between both of them. So I'm, I'm not sure, and I guess we would need to know, like, is, the, is it a manual process to switch somebody from guest to member in the, in the forums? Like how does someone become a member on the forums? Correct. I still don't know. I'm working on that. Okay. All right. That's cool. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get that, we'll get that figured out. Um, but jumping back. So, you know, one thing that I've learned from decades of, of being in business, one of the, one of the biggest tools that any company can have uh, is, is a really robust CRM system. It's a customer resource management system and, and our membership, our, they are our customers and we need to treat them as such. Um, integrated into the, into the website platform that we're proposing to utilize is a very comprehensive CRM system. And that will allow for um, customers, members at any given time to uh, buy membership through any number of, of payment options, be that PayPal, credit card, um, even gift certificates, you know, for that matter. And then we can also manually add, delete, and manage memberships. Um, what I like about this is, is we'll be collecting not only you know, this email address and this, this name has membership, but we can collect more information in terms of address information. Um, and because I, I think something that people have asked over and over again is, are there networking opportunities? I'm new to this hobby. Is there anybody close to me that I can reach out to, to ask questions or run subs with, you know? So this will um, allow us to start laying the foundation for networking opportunities, not only in America, but globally. So it gets kind of exciting to me. Um, one thing I think we're gonna need to do is have like a checkbox when people sign up for their membership. Yeah, go ahead and put my contact information out fellow members can reach out to me just to make sure that we legally cover our bases so that, uh, you know, from a privacy perspective. Um, 
So that's all going to be built in there. Members will get automatic email renewals with a link. It's like, hey, it's time to renew. It'll pop up in your inbox, follow the link, and, and you can pay for things that way. So just to let you know, and, and what that'll also do, which is, you know, again, we probably have the capabilities now, but it's, it's messy. We can at a glance say, okay, we've got this many members. Okay. Okay. We've got 25 members that signed up over the last 30 days. You know, we've got 65 members over the last 30 days or, or, or sorry, you know, 60 days or 90 days. We'll be able to track our initiatives. You know, if we, if we make some marketing efforts, oh, we got a, a membership spike of 15 members. So that was worthwhile doing. You raised your, your hand there, Ed? Yeah. You know, and on top of that, you know, with a viable membership listing that, that, that the executive committee or have you has control of, if there's a major announcement to be made, Bob now has a list of emails to send like, hey, we're working on this. And we don't have to depend on people going to the forum the to get an announcement. They're going to get it in their inbox that yep. there is this happening. Also, um, I, I'm sure when we get down to opening up items for voting, because not only are we going to open to get suggestions from you guys, but that we vote as a group on implementing it. Not that what, it, what, I, just just on, on that point, we could actually set up through the member portal on the website voting. So so you can actually go in and fill out the form and we can collect all of that information in real time. Um, yes. So it'll then simplify, it'll simplify so many things. The management of, of the, the, like the customer resource management will handle that. And we'll, mm -hmm. we'll treat members as members again, not just names and, and avatars showing up as a form. Well, what I, what I like is we're breaking the forums out. The forum's a tool, but it's not the subcommittee, right? right. So we, we, we need to, there, there's people who don't go to the forums. I, I don't know the statistics. I'm sure we could look somewhere on the forums that they would have statistics for that. But, uh, you know, I'm sure 50% of our membership doesn't come more than a couple times a month or, or two months or three months. So to have that, that communication tool would be hugely valuable. To us, I think I'm, I'm super excited about that. We can create newsletters, monthly newsletters. That's cool. I'm not going to do it though. Somebody else is going to have to do it. I love well, and that in itself is the issue. You know, is I'm not going to do it. Somebody else can do it. Yeah. And well, nobody <laughs> does it, and it doesn't happen. So I think anything that we implement, it's got to be sustainable and and not reliant on an individual to make it happen. Uh, by, by the way, a quick shout out. I see you showed up, Jeff. Glad you showed up. Jeff, the editor. You're, by the he way, is. Here, like a, a huge shout out to Ed. That yeah. is such an amazing job that he does. And Jeff, you're muted, by the way. Um, I can unmute you, I think. I can ask you to unmute. Um, Sorry. It, does, no, that's okay. Does anybody have, or do you know where we would have a full resolution image of the subcommittee logo? I have, uh, you know, a very, fairly high res version of it. I'd have to look and see how high, but yeah. I, have I, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking, you know, like a million pixels, but just some, because <laughs> I, I grabbed off the website a little like 50 by 50 pixel. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. what's in my background right now. <laughs> I can get you something better than that, Bob, yes. <laughs> that, that would be great. Thank okay. you, appreciate it. Um, sorry, I couldn't get in before uh, Tom had to had to help me get in because when I was trying to use the link that was sent to me in the email and also on the Facebook page, it kept telling me that another meeting was in progress. Yeah. To get in. But what, what, what had happened, I don't know how it did, it did just for you guys that I had in Zoom, there was a link for the for the subcommittee meeting and I clicked on that and only two people were there. So it must have created two separate links for the same meeting. And I was there waiting and there's like nobody coming and I couldn't figure um, it out. <laughs> I, just, I, I just want to know that I tried to get in. So I'm finally, and so is uh, Tom Darkety was trying to get in too. He finally gave up, so. All right, no, I, well, I appreciate it. But again, we're, we're recording this. 
and it'll be posted in the forum. So everybody's going to have opportunity to take a look at this and, uh, and watch it in their free time. So good. I'm making a note to get you a better logo. <laughs> okay, excellent. I appreciate that. Thank you. Get better each time. Right. And and they need to know, even though they missed it, they're part, still part of it. And email any comments to the three of us. Absolutely. Okay. And the, and the, and on the forums, we're, we're there all the time. Yeah. It's their club. It's their membership. We're just guiding it. There you go. All right. Um, I think the last one that I want to touch on here because we're, we got delayed, although we can go a little bit later if we need to. And this is a big one. This is something that Ed is going to take point on. Um, and this is talking about subruns. So Ed, why don't you talk about your vision for how the subcommittee is going to interact with, uh, with subruns? Now, this is just an idea. And the beauty of today, this moment now, is we can do whatever we want, keep it, and if we don't like it, trash it. If we got to throw dirt on the wall and see what sticks, so we begin to get comfortable, um, I just want to know, anything is on the table. Let's try it. We don't like it. We can, period. So I just want to open up. So these ideas that I'm about to spat out they may not work or they may work, but we as a collective group, it will be up to us. All I know is this, if you continue to do what you did, you're gonna get what you got. We need to change, okay? But so, what's, the, what's, the what's the definition of insanity? Of insanity. Doing Keep the same doing thing, the same over, thing and over, over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Guys, just a quick little history. I, I think at one point we were at least 1500 members and I remember, I thought we've gotten as high as 3,500 members at one point. Um, I don't remember. I, I do know 15 at one point. Um, uh, Jeff, you're muted. If you remember the actual number. Um, there you go. Weird. Uh, we were up to about 1,100 max. Maybe 1,100 max at one point, yeah. at, or during the 90s. Something like that. Yeah, and okay. that was just a, a okay. And now we're down. I don't know. I'm estimating just based on um, Tom's numbers. Uh, I don't know if they were quarterly or whatever of what income comes. I assume that's off the web that maybe 500 members now. Yeah, we don't know. So, at least 300, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the point being is we can do whatever we want to change that. So what I want to do is, is, you know, I want to act as the chief of staff for the, the executive committee for the subruns. You know, I want to help coordinate them more to, to get them more involved. And I'm talking about things like I want to revive the subcommittee's YouTube channel. And I want people, I want representatives of each of the subruns to send me videos. I don't care if they take this thing and get a five minute quick video of subs, send it to me with who did it, who died. I'll give them full credit, non-editing, just stuff it up there. You understand what I'm saying? So that gets visibility, okay? That the subrons get visibility and this will begin to mushroom, okay? Um, it will, I, you know, there to support. Maybe we revive or, or get an Instagram account going. Jeff, what are you doing with, with, with the Facebook now that, we have a, a real, like the last one, it was just a, a page and you couldn't interact with it. Look at all those people. What do you got? Um, how many members we got on that now? They're not subcommittee members, but potentially. Um, we got quite a few. Tom and I discussed it wherever Tom went. Oh, there he is. Yeah. And uh, yeah. We, we talked about it one night it, back in March. And then the next day in my email, I got a notice from him that he'd set it up. And we've had all kinds of interest since then. And of course, we keep promoting on the on the group page to join the actual subcommittee. And that's gotten some members. Um, what I wanted to go back to just quickly to what Bob was saying before. You know, I'm in favor of any of the website upgrades, the forum upgrades, any of that stuff you're talking about. But first and foremost, what you, what you mentioned, let's make it easier and faster to join. There's been mm -hmm. so many times people have tried to join 
and something's gone wrong and I don't know how to help them. And I've referred to, to Jim Butt who has helped people through the process many times. Tom's now helped people through the process. I think that should be job one on the website or the forums, make the joining system work better and yeah, use different payment methods would be great too. And you can yeah, have to make the upgrades because at the current forum, uh, um, OS, we can't do that. Okay. So well, all this other stuff is great. I just like that to see number one because we're missing people yeah. who are trying to join and can't and then say bye bye. And and as a human being, if if it takes me more than three tries to do something, I walk away. It ain't yeah. worth my time. I got I got you know ADD man. I'm telling you right now, most people they don't get immediate even and don't give me this kid stuff either. All of us, if we don't get that gratification out of it's something as simple as joining, you know, that, that, that applies to me with this meeting. I was on my way out. Yeah. And Tom rescued me after several attempts. So yeah. Well, but, but so, well, I, I, I apologize about the meeting. That was probably my fault, although it was not intentional. <laughs> I understand. But I'm going to over, I want to oversee and I want to work with um, representatives from each of the sub -runs. Let's make it real. Two-way communication. And, and I'm not asking anybody to go out of the way and, well, I don't want to have to do that. It's going to be business as usual. Just, just you know, work, talk back and forth. You know, that's all I'm looking for. And I will find a ways to make it easier for you guys and bring it up here and do it. There's, you know, there's, there's a couple of things in there. So speaking to the sub Ron, you know, thing, thing before, um, one thing that Ed is in the process of doing and has already started doing is, is sort of taking stock of where are our sub runs located? Who are the key members? What are they doing and how often? Um, we, I, we should know that as the subcommittee. And if these are officially sponsored groups, we should have visibility to this. If, if they're using the subcommittee name, we, we need to know what's going on so that we can push people in that direction and, uh, and make the information transparent and available to anybody that wants to. So I think that's, a, that's one of the, yeah, go ahead, Jeff. I was just gonna say, Tom, I think late last year, went through our list and called the list, right, Tom? So that those who are now listed in the subcommittee report as being the, the chapters <laughs> are current and up to date. Okay, all right, cool, good to know. Um, you, and then Tom. circling back on that part of, of what Ed's going to be working on, um, what resources can we provide to the sub Um, what are the best practices for events? Um, you know, we, we've got opportunity now to leverage the collective experience of all of these people to make successful events, not only for the local sub but for the subcommittee and, you know, from a, from a larger perspective, the, the hobby as a whole. So, you know, this could be everything from pre-event marketing to marketing materials to leveraging, you know, media coverage locally. You know, all of these things should be kind of part and parcel of a, of a you know, a, a turnkey package. It's like, you're gonna be holding an event, bang, here's, here's the book, you know, you can go through, here's all the checklists and, and resources and everything the subcommittee can do for you to make this as successful an event as it could possibly be. Because what kind of worries me is that some of these, you know, officially sanctioned sub run events might just turn into nothing more than a couple of guys getting together at the lake on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, it could be so much more. Those, those events could still happen, you know, but, but let's market them. Let's let people know what's going on. Let's let people know what to expect. Let's let people know who to contact. So I think I think we can we can do a lot better um, at at that. So that's a it's a it's a big thing. And everybody's always asking, where can I go? Who can I talk to? I want to run my boat. Is there any other people around me? So yeah, those Bob, are those are. Bob, yeah. one thing one thing I do want you to bring up before we close it off um, is what the member can now we got to work on what the member can expect as a member. Is it, you know, that it's not just the forum anymore. I mean, what do you get for your X amount of dollars per year besides the report? 
what do we, what in turn, you know, what's that value uh, that they're going to get? So briefly like the swag and, and other stuff like that, things that make us from a forum to a club. Let's re briefly touch on that, I think. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And, and that was one, you know, one of those top points there is, is building value in our membership. What are we offering and what can we offer our members that makes them willing to plunk down, you know, the membership fee, whatever, whatever that is. Um, I think that's, that's really, really important. And we touched on this idea of swag um, and by swag for, for those of you not familiar, we're talking about, you know, club, um, or, or membership, organizational, uh, promotional items, t-shirts, caps, mugs, uh, uh, knitted trans transmitter warmers. I don't know, whatever we come up with, right. For, for, uh, you know, this kind of thing, but what this does and, and to a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, it's not important, but what it does is it builds pride, a sense of pride yes. and community and between community. individuals. So, um, I think that is uh, is really important for us to to focus on, and honestly, it's not a massive um, undertaking to to start building out this um, you know vision for for things that people can be excited about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt had a thing. He's asked me if there's anything he can do to help uh, sub runs in the UK. I'm sure there's a lot. On to you. Bob. Well, you give me ideas, and I'll throw them out there. Yep. <laughs> You know, well, I, yeah. I think, I think just to keep it let's keep that to the end, because I think what what Matt has done is just incredible um, in his heart and attitude, and and that is the solution right there. Is when somebody says, "What can I do?" So if we keep it to the end when we do our question and answers, and we can finish our business here, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, and and honestly, we're we're getting there because we uh, we're at the like fifty minute mark uh, coming up here right now, and I do want to keep. Um, uh, aware and respect everybody's time. Thank you for, for joining us here. Um, but those, those are the, the, the big things, uh, you know, and, and if we can touch on, you know, a portion of those and do them really, really well in 2021, that'll be huge win, I think, for, uh, for the organization. So um, anything else from a, from a focus area, you guys, before we move on to like Q&A? Real quick. I would like to see that the hit list posted up with on uh, in your president's um, sure the, uh, on the forum and giving people an uh, an opportunity to comment and uh, and look at that. You know the ones that apparently quite a few missed <laughs> the meeting, but this will give them an opportunity to. It's uh, like I said, all the important people are here. We're fine. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Well, with that, you you lucky few people who are, are here, and it's now Q&A time. We can open this up for general discussion. Yeah, Jeff? I just wanted to say how great it is to see Bernhard here. He's our newest uh, contributor to the subcommittee report, and it's nice to see him in person. And he's awesome. He's interested, so That's welcome. He's, Absolutely. He's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome. I, so um, it's... Um, I have a little problem. Um, you are talking for me quite quick. So I have to do a, a simul uh, translation, translation. Yeah. Uh, from English to German to Bavaria. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> I can tell you. I'm dedication. Chief of Sonar Association. And uh, we are like this. The same things, the same questions, uh, the same circumstances about our hobby. And uh, my opinion is uh, to show uh, the, uh, the beauty, the, the emotions behind it. Yes. A submarine is a submarine. But, but what makes a submarine fantastic for yeah. me, for the others? That's the main question that uh, we should answer. And uh, with this, you can change a very lot in mind and in heart. Mm -hmm. Absolutely well said. Very nice. Well said. From the heart. So on the comments, we have uh, 
Uh, Matthew mentioned subs. It's what we do as a tagline. <laughs> oh, so look at Rick. Always got his head in the beer. Sub and sub. I like it. I, like it. Yeah. I, I, I thought sub. It's not just uh, uh, some meat between two slices of bread. <laughs> <laughs> that can go real wrong quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, Ed, my mind just completely went totally a different direction there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, going back to, you know, Matthew said about what can you do to help uh, in the UK? And, and this is for anybody uh, in, in Germany and in, in Belgium and in India. Um, I, I would say get with Ed and let's, let's get a you know, a, a representation there, a subron there. That would be helpful to report and, what's, what's going on in that area. And, and like I, I want all the subron and the chapter to know, work with me, you know, send me the work you don't want to do. You know, like I said, like posting stuff and, and getting, getting stuff out there. That's what I want That's what I mean about chief of staff. It, that that you know I, I know it's hard to get people to do stuff you go you have a fun run and and i even forget to take video but get, dedicate some you're the video guy of the club just even stupid just, just take that stupid thing and just five minutes of video and send it to me and and stuff like that maybe you know we can work things out even if we get a sh if we share a special password and account so you guys can do it or instagram or something just to Get us out there, you know. Hey, Tom, so what so happened to our UK else? subrun? Pardon me. Tom, what happened to our UK subrun? We had one for a long time. Um, the the individual um, decided he didn't want to, and nobody stepped up. There was one person that did step up, but um, the prior person, I guess, talked him out of it. So um, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. And and that's I think the thing. I don't want to walk blindly in here. We say we want to be a um, an international organization when we're not supporting other countries the way they want to be supported. I mean, I'm, I may know what I think is right, but that may be absolutely the wrong way. So I'd like a little more autonomy that people can, can uh, run it the way they want. Exactly. Yeah. I, you know, and, and I, I wanted to mention as well, you know, part of that, that global focus, which again is in here is, is this idea of networking. You know, we've, uh, we, we, We've got so much opportunity to network with other global submarine organizations like Sonar. You know, for example, it, it would be great if rather than duplicating efforts, we could share resources. Yeah, um, awesome. and, and, you know, obviously, I, I don't see any reason why I couldn't be a Sonar member and a subcommittee member. Might not be valuable to me if I don't speak German and it's all in German, but, you know, there, there's opportunities, I think. Um, you know, for, for certain things, best practices, you know, sharing out uh, ideas about making successful events, um, you know, and, and that kind of thing, but more so than other just RC submarine communities, but museums, uh, static modeling clubs, ship modeling clubs, you know, other arenas, maybe that we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of vet associations. You know, all of, all of these things, so many of my customers are, are former Navy people who just think submarines are the coolest thing ever, and they have no idea how to get started. And they're right. Um, just for the record, they're right. So <laughs> if I can be a little nerdy here, um, in the TV series Star Trek, um, they had a translator. <laughs> Any, anybody could, uh, you know, understand each other. And I like Facebook just for that reason is if I go onto a German site or uh, Indonesia, I hit that translate button, I can understand most of what they're saying. And I think yeah. it's great if we could do something like that on our site so that we're not just an English speaking site. I think that'd be incredible for us to do a big hairy dream here. Yeah, it's um, David Forrest speaking from just from, uh, from Northern England actually. Um, and as far as events go as well, in the in past few, past years, there has been quite a thriving event scene in the UK and only too happy to share share with subcommittee on all these all these things. And I don't know why we haven't in the past, really. Um, this year, it's in absolute bits because of the pandemic. So who knows? But yeah, uh, you know, absolutely no reason not to not to share share the, the subcommittee. 
and uh, it's yeah, can I, really can I just say how how it's a, I think it's a 50 50 thanks to you and uh, Zoom for making this meeting possible. It's fantastic to see you all. I mean, there's <laughs> Tom there that I've had dealings with over many years, and here you are. You're you're much younger and thinner and more handsome than I could possibly imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. but, uh, it's really nice to, to see you all. Um, and yeah, I, I think there's been probably too much um, competition and splitting off in the whole submarine yeah. area. And uh, I'm too happy to share. And I'm sorry, I'm speaking with a bit of a Association of Little Submariners hat on. So right. Uh, right. as Tom knows, Tom knows all the, the history of it and so on. Yeah. I, I do want to make a quick report to my two colleagues here and you guys, uh, we're talking about um, uh, uh, other, what I call subject matter experts. And, and uh, I reached out to a guy, he, he's a guy who runs the Subbrief YouTube channel and uh, his name is Aaron Amick. He is a former Samaritan, uh, served on at least four submarines. And I found him because I like to do submarine simulation combat games. And that's another opportunity. He has 37,000 followers. So he can't, he's looking at our site. He's going to check his site. 37,000 YouTube followers. If 10% if of them or 1% are interested in going from, oh, I play cold waters to now I can play with a toy submarine. It, there's got to be common interest there, yes. you know? There's got to be, yeah. And, and I, I, the wealth he brings in, in knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was interesting what you were saying earlier about where the, the, the role of, say, the subcommittee should end. And I think you've got to include one-to-one -one submarines. It's no... Yes, yes absolutely. The history and research is all there. Where you perhaps would want to, where you want to stop is that we don't go building submarines that we get into. Um, and that's about it, really. Right. right. Else is fair game, we, we are the aficionado. We are the submarine. We yeah. are the ones that celebrate with these guys too. Yeah. Quest, quest, question for you guys. I get so many calls for people looking for information on ROVs. Does, do you think that falls under the, the purview of the of the subcommittee or is that beyond the scope? Oh, wow. it's in. It's, well, ju it's just out there, I'd say. Yes, just I'd say in, yeah. Yeah. If it's under the water, it's ours. We yeah. own it. If it's well, under, we, under that that well, interface, well, here's our tagline: If it's under the water, it's ours. We yeah, we own it. And <laughs> also it. with ROVs, a lot more youngsters are more interested in doing yeah. ROVs. Than they are actually That's doing yeah. that yeah. uh, proper so, marine stuff. As long as you don't well, get what into that, it, what, then it's, then what it's that off. does is it opens up a massive opportunity for networking with educational institutions and schools. <sighs> I mean, I'm already going. I was 2019 going to schools and talking about submarines that I was already doing that before we had lockdown. So that was yeah. quite, an, that was quite an interesting experience, but uh, yeah, definitely getting to the schools and the colleges. Yeah, Jeff. I just might humbly remind everyone, our current tagline is the magazine for the submarine enthusiast. So that would certainly include yeah. ROV. And, that, and that's, that's it. Yeah. Uh, All right. Any other questions or comments? Because we're running up against our, our end here. Just, just a comment on what, what, a, what a good move it was when the subcommittee basically dropped its subscriptions. I think, you know, you've actually made it very affordable for, for most people, most, most any enthusiast, really. I, I think that, that was a, a great move. Um, the Association of Model Submariners, we suffered a long time for trying to collect subs and so on, uh, you know, and you've got it to the level where people, it's it really, it's- It's the price of, a, of an expensive of property. Remember. Sorry, yeah, yeah. We, we've had discussions on that too, right, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. Well, we want to bring value into it. Actually, I, I prefer that the subcommittee had more value than the subscription. And, and that's- Yeah, yes. Is, yeah. Is, uh, Some is, people don't want to pay the $10. That's pretty cheap. Yeah. But you are, kind of you, are crazy. A, you are a magazine provider, and I think you're the only. Well, no, the Sonar still do a magazine. But Sonar still does. They do, right? That's yeah. where we get stuff from, Bernhard. Ah, oh, got you. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm just the, working on the new magazine, the eighty-four of Sonar. Um, if I click. Um, 
bitch of fine, maybe if you'd like to. Deactivate. No, it's de deactivated. I cannot show you uh, the title of the new Sonar magazine, but you will be astonished about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, I, I tell you, uh, the main title is Grumman Avenger. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Very good. Well, this uh, yeah, this is you can great. say also an airplane can die. <laughs> um, I am going to uh, close things off here. As I as I mentioned, uh, as being recorded, it'll be posted on the subcommittee website. Anybody can take a look at it. Um, in that forum, people will be able to post comments. This is going to be a regularly occurring event. So um, hopefully next time we'll have fewer technical issues uh, and more attendees. Um, but this was, a, I think, a great start. And uh, I know I, for one, am really excited about what the future of the subcommittee holds. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. Any parting words from Tom or Ed? I thank everybody for being here. Um, I think it's important that everybody knows it's, it's, your, it's your committee. It's not. Bob's and Ed's, it's not mine. Um, and we want it to do what you need, not what we need. So let's let's grow this together and build this hobby and, and just have lots of fun running subs on side. Sounds good. Absolutely. Stay safe, everyone. All right, you bet. Good. good night, good evening, good morning, depending where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Still no, sleep. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.